the world turns and goes on turning every day and most of us go with it. But for some who spend their whole lives traveling it seems as if the world moves past while they stand still. These, the barges of Europe's rivers and canals, carry more than just their cargo. This is a story, not only of the ships, but of the barge people themselves. This ship is on the move, day and night, week in, week out. Today the River Rhine, tomorrow a small village in Holland. But for the skipper, it makes very little difference because his home goes with him, and so does his family. And like most skippers' wives, she is as much at home steering the ship as she is with a carpet sweeper. Here on the Rhine, the water forms a lifeline between the North Sea and the industrial heart of Europe. And here the barges grow bigger and more sophisticated every year. This strange-looking tug is pushing a collection of dumb barges from Rotterdam to the Ruhr. If you transfer their cargo from the river to the road, the line of trucks would stretch nose to tail for about 15 kilometers. Navigating in a strong current, the skippers need to be very much awake, and he is. We shall be coming back aboard this ship, but for the moment take a look aboard another barge, the Gezina. At first sight, the life of this crew looks very different indeed. Here technology and stress are strictly for other ships and other people. Nearly a hundred years old, the Gazina holds only a tenth of the cargo that our barge on the Rhine can carry. She travels at half the speed, but she can navigate the small canals and visit places that a modern barge could never reach. The Gazina is a home and a living for three people. For a man in his early twenties, it's a lonely world that has hardly changed at all, either in his lifetime or in the lifetime of his parents. How much longer it will last is another matter. The biggest problem of all is getting yourself a cargo. In Rotterdam, the skippers come to the berths to wait and take their turn. Every barge is a slip of paper and every time his turn comes round, a skipper can choose from the cargoes that are waiting to be moved. Only, it may take anything up to three weeks before the cargo and the barge come together and the vital slip of paper finally changes hands. Three weeks of patience, and for every skipper that watches, there's a barge that lies empty and waits. And on every barge, there's a wife who's ready to leave when a cargo has been found.
This harbour in Rotterdam is probably the closest thing to a permanent home that these people and their children have ever known. Even bringing back the shopping takes a lot more strength and determination when you have to climb from one barge to another. But it has its compensations. If you don't happen to like your neighbours, there's always the chance that tomorrow they'll be gone. Who knows, they may even have left by the time you get home. And you can't help noticing that this is very much a man's world. Barges from France and Belgium, Dutchmen and Germans. Everyone ready and everyone waiting its turn. Barge after barge after barge. One goes and another arrives and it seems that every day is washing day. For the small children who live aboard and haven't yet started regular school, this waiting is an experience that doesn't come often enough. Here in the harbour there's a special nursery school only for the children of the barges. They may speak different languages, but they understand each other well enough. Watch them closely and you can see why these children belong together. They never draw houses or trees, never trains or buses, just ships. A toy car is something that belongs only on the ship that they have built out of bricks. And the only part of the land they bother to create is the lock that their ship sails into. No cargo, no pay. Survival for the family depends entirely on that vital little piece of paper. And so it is for the skipper of the Gesina. He is not with a great crowd of ships in Rotterdam, but in Holland's capital, Amsterdam. The skipper has been to the Burs here and signed a contract to carry a cargo to Belgium. It's been a good day for cargoes and all over Holland there are barges moving away to load. This vast bulk carrier is full of meal made from soya beans, a vital ingredient for the production of animal food. Take it by road and the motorways would be jammed. By water it can move cheaply and without a hold up to almost any part of Europe. Just a hundred tons of that cargo will be traveling in the hold of the Gesina. The only trouble with soya meal is that apart from coarse grains, it also consists largely of fine dust that gets in your eyes, your nose and into every corner of the ship. For the skipper's wife, a lot of life seems to be taken up with washing and she is used to it. Do you remember the big barge on the Rhine? They have just picked up a cargo of sand in Germany. They're taking it back to Holland for making concrete. 
It's amazing how useful a radar scanner can be on a big ship like this. Superficially, a modern ship like the Cotrans 3 may look like another world. They have a paid crew instead of a grown-up son, and it's an awful lot bigger. But the job is the same. He takes his work and his family with him, just as the skipper of the Gazina does. Admittedly, the ship itself is very different, particularly the engine. But both ships are part of a way of life that most ordinary people never share. And perhaps when you watch the Gazina, it's easier to see how different that life is. Here they live in a cabin no bigger than a cupboard. They have no proper lavatory or bathroom. But then they have no rush hour, no office and no noise from the neighbors either. And of course we shouldn't judge their life from watching only when the sun shines. But on the other hand, it doesn't always rain or snow in Holland and there are many parts of this small country that are only seen by the families who live on the water. So, providing the weather stays fine and you don't have too much ambition, there may well be a lot to save for life on a barge. But there is one problem we haven't mentioned, and it's a big one. The children of the Cotrans have a good life. They may not see too much of other children, but they live well and they're happy. The world passes outside their window and leaves little impression. To the children, one lock is very much like another. Some go up and some go down. Sand to the children is something you load in one place and unload in another. They know very little about beaches, but they'll probably be making sand castles on board before the day is out so who cares about the sea? For the fathers and mothers of young children, there's a moment to face which all of them dread. The moment when the children have to go to school. While their home is on the move, there's no way that they can go off to the school down the road. There is no road, and so there is no school. When the children are old enough, they'll probably be sent here. This is a special school hostel built for the barge children. While they're of school age, the children live most of their lives in this building. If the barge happens to be near Rotterdam, 
They can go home for weekends and come back like these lucky ones on Sunday night. If the barge is far away, they stay here firmly on the land. The children find it hard to adjust at first, and some of the mothers find it even harder. There are many women who have left the barges altogether and set up home on shore, so that they can make a home for the children while they are at school. But it takes two people to run a barge, and many skippers can't afford a crew and a house on land as well. So every Sunday evening, they drink a cup of coffee and say goodbye. It's a hard thing to say to your child, so we'll see you next week, if we can. No, we don't know where we're going, and we have no idea where we'll be tomorrow. It's six o'clock in the morning, and the land has served its purpose for another night. The place where they slept is left behind and forgotten. They don't live there anymore. There's work to do here, and it doesn't matter where they stay tonight. For those of us who live on the land, it's probably the gentle slowness of their lives that comes as most of a surprise. And you'll find that on little canals like this, their refusal to be in a hurry is something that affects everybody, and not just the people afloat.
for the people who come in contact with Cotrans, life does progress a good deal faster. But then there's a reason for it. This ship doesn't belong to the skipper as most of the others do. It belongs to the man who buys the sand and sells the concrete, and so the Cotrans never waits for a cargo. A thousand tons on, and a thousand tons off, and back for another load. For the child that watches from the wheelhouse, it makes no difference that yesterday was Germany and today is Holland. To the skipper and his wife, life is a good deal more complicated. They may live in luxury, and they do, though they have little time to sit and enjoy it. But problems like visiting her mother or going to a wedding can be very complicated indeed. The difficulties they had in meeting before they got married were almost beyond belief. In those days, they lived on separate barges. Of course, nowadays, technology does help. As long as they can get the ship alongside the bank, once every couple of weeks or so, they do have a chance to do the shopping. But how would you like to go through all this every time you wanted to slip around the corner and buy a packet of cigarettes or a loaf of bread? You only have to watch them go round the shelves of a supermarket to realize that this isn't an expedition they make very often. The ship has a very large deep freeze and they use it. They look just like an ordinary couple, that is, until you notice how much food they're taking home. On the Gesina, there have been very few technical advances in the last 50 years, apart from a pressure cooker, and that is sometimes a doubtful asset. Even cleaning the propeller is done by hand, and there's very little aboard the boat that makes living any easier. The sad thing is that their ship is really too small for the family to make a proper living. It simply doesn't carry enough cargo. When the skipper retires in a year or two, their son will not take over. The whole family will move ashore, and the Gazina will probably become a houseboat, like so many others. The ship itself may well be a relic of the past, but it would be a big mistake to think that their way of life is also doomed. There are many, many more families whose values are exactly the same. Yes, it's a bigger ship and it has every technical advantage. It carries more cargo, it goes a lot faster and makes a lot more money. Down below, it's equipped like a modern flat in any big city. But the really important things are just the same. Their whole lives are dominated by barges and cargoes, and everything revolves round water. And the skipper steers his ship all day just the same, even if he doesn't use a wheel. She isn't left alone at home and her son knows his father a lot better than most small children do. For many people in the world, life has become very complicated. 
a lot of the old values which kept us going have been forgotten. Not here. The Baat people have always been something of a closed community. The people on the land thought of them as gypsies and rejected them. The Baat people got on with their own lives and kept the rest of the world and all its ways at arm's length. And so, basically, it still is. Very little has changed. Every year for their holidays, a lot of the Barge families take their homes with them and travel north to Friesland. And here they go sailing, only it's sailing with a difference. The skipper of the Cotrans goes as well, only here he is not the skipper. He's part of the crew of a scutche, a sailing barge. These are the boats that used to trade on the canals before the diesel engine was invented. Many of their grandparents were born on ships like these. Fourteen of them race every year for two weeks, and it's quite an experience. You won't see racing like this anywhere else in the world. You won't see ships like these anywhere else either. And come to that, you won't find any sailors quite like these men. They are the barge people, and as you can understand, they always have been, and still are, something of a race apart. <laughs> 